Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. This is Christopher Aaron. It is the 1st of March, 2017, and there is a big silver breakout that I want to bring to your attention. This should have important ramifications for the next several months, although I do have to say the very short-term action is going to get very volatile going forward. There are a lot of mixed signals coming into the sector, and I want to show you exactly what is happening. We will focus on silver in this presentation with a brief look at gold as well. However, when you see what we have seen here over the last few months, which is silver showing relative strength compared to gold, you know that that has positive implications for both metals. When silver is rising relative to gold, we tend to see strength across the entire complex. So we can see the bit of weakness coming into gold over the last couple days falling just below 1240. I think this is going to be an important pivot point to watch just below the 1240 region and then coming back switching over to look at silver. Notice silver not making a new low for this move today and basically just holding its own over the last three days. So you're seeing the relative strength in silver. This is equating to an improving in the gold to silver ratio over the last few months. We may look at that in the next presentation. I do want to focus on silver specifically in this video. Now, something that's been going on before we look at the actual silver chart here that a lot of people have begun to pick up on, this has been very significant, is the underperformance that we have seen in the silver mining complex relative to the price of silver bullion itself. So take a look at these two charts here. One is right on top of the other, same time scale dating back to the beginning of February. And on the top, we are looking at the SIL ETF. This is a basket of about 30 silver miners, an average valuation of about 30 silver miners. And on the bottom, we are looking at silver bullion as represented by the SLV fund. I don't think you should own the SLV for the long run if you're new to the precious metals. I do think you should be primarily accumulating the physical metal. However, I use this for a short term tracking of the underlying price. So just look, I mean, from a high level overview here, look at the fact that basically from the first week in February, you've had the silver mining complex, which has fallen about 10% over the last few weeks relative to the price of silver, which has gained about a dollar in spot prices or about 4% over the last several weeks. So when you see this kind of underperformance by the silver mining complex here, um, and the same thing could be said for the gold mining complex relative to gold, although it's more dramatic in silver over the last few weeks. What is going on here? You know, these silver mining companies um, whose profits are primarily derived from the price of the underlying metal have lost 10% of their value as the metal has risen and its underlying price. So there are two ways to look at this. And one has to do with the thesis that I proposed in the last video. If you haven't watched that, you may want to go back and take a look at that, which is that the sector may be carving out the right shoulder of an inverse head and shoulders pattern. And if that's so, you can't always put a reason as to why this is happening from a fundamental standpoint, except to say, that weakness needed to show up from a technical basis. And that's what we're seeing here over the last few weeks. The other way to interpret this is that the silver mining complex is not believing this rise in the price of the metal and that there may be a pullback or perhaps a sharp but quick correction here coming to the price of silver. So, Let's take a look at the price of silver with this backdrop and see how this may play out. Switching over to the actual silver chart, and I'm going to go through this one um, very carefully here. For anyone who's new to this channel, I want to call up this key that I bring up for pretty much every uh, chart here. We do keep the colors the same so that we can try to make some sense of what could otherwise just be interpreted as a bunch of squiggly lines. 
when in fact we are looking at price patterns that are a component of human nature. And so every color that you see here basically on the screen represents a different pattern that is playing out in this market. So what I would draw your attention to first if you're new to looking at these charts for the silver market is this primary downtrend defined by these blue lines, blue corresponding to the primary trend lines. Basically since the high in July, you've had a series of lower lows and lower highs defined by this blue line and this blue line right here. So the important thing that I want to draw to your attention is that silver has broken out of the upper declining trend line here. So this is the breakout that I was talking about. Now this is significant when you see basically off the lows, the five year lows that we had last year, and you have the breaking of a primary, the first primary decline that we've had since the absolute lows last year, it's telling you something. It's telling you this was a very significant bottom here at 1575. Now, why is there this shaded region here at this trend line? That's because from my observation, trading this market, and I've outlined this right here on the chart, in my observation, um, what you saw here with the decline in silver, as far as the upper boundary of this primary declining pattern, you had basically two trend lines that were being respected here. You had one which I'm calling a best fit trend line. And if you look at where the line actually goes here, using a statistical term for a best fit analysis of where the high is matched up with. And then if you look at the upper line here, you are looking at the absolute highs. So basically from the high in July, what was the very highest that we can match this trend line up to here, especially in September, this peak right here, just above $20 an ounce. And you have a slightly different trend line that forms here. So for some of my premium subscribers, as we were watching this play out over the, over the last few months, um, especially here when we saw the breakout above this 725, I was alerting subscribers that there was going to be something of a grind here as silver broke out of this bottoming pattern and then made its way above the best fit trend line, which we saw break here in the first week in February. And now just over the last week, we have seen the absolute highs trend line break. So in sum, you now have a legitimate break of the primary declining trend that we've seen in silver since July. Now I do have a target for silver that is still marginally higher than we are seeing now. And this is based on a measurement of the amplitude here of the bottoming pattern below this very well defined resistance at 1725. That target shown right here is about 1875. So it's not that much higher than we are today. Now, the other things to pay attention to uh, with regards to what could be happening here in silver going forward. First, I just want to reiterate how important this breakout here of this primary decline is. You're talking the first decline of the move in silver since the absolute lows that we saw in December, January of last year. So very significant. That said, the shorter term action here is getting much more difficult to define, especially compared to how we were observing things over the last several months. You had a very clear wedge formation forming here toward the later part of 2016 breaking. You had a very clear resistance level here, 1725, and you had a very clear breakout here. So with this in mind that you have a higher target, I would say that this is probably going to be a time that you that if you are interested in the silver market, it's going to be better to be a long term investor. You could do some trading here, but the signals could be getting very volatile. For example, we have the negation signal from the silver mining complex right now. So, for example, if the target that I have here at 1875 is hit, it is quite possible that the silver miners are already anticipating that after this target is hit, silver is going to quickly drop back down to retest somewhere in the vicinity of this 1725 support level. 
this black line here you can see it very clearly this was the bottom of the strong decline in october 1725 once this was broken the price here attempted to get back over it in december notice how it was stopped right here at this black line it was stopped once again in january backed off and broke out so you have one two three you have about four significant pivot points here at 725 which is telling me that in any weakness 1725 looks to be a fairly decent level of support now the other thing that you will see on any weakness is this broken set of trend lines here defined by the blue uh, shaded area should also act as support so if you'll notice both of these areas basically overlap right now so i think on any weakness you may see a very quick and sharp pullback in silver somewhere down to between 1725 perhaps 1750 or 1775. that said we of course have to remember that technical targets on silver are prone to overshoot so this could get so volatile that for example it overshoots on the upside and perhaps you see a, a 1950 or a 1975 target hit before boom you get something like a dollar fifty or a two dollar retracement here in the later part of the spring all this is to say ladies and gentlemen once again this is a very important break of a downtrend as far as the long-term uh, ramifications go for the silver market over the short run prepare for a lot of volatility I would say this is probably going to be a very good time to be a stacker or an investor in some of the underlying silver equities and I would say to be very very careful with the short-term trades because this is giving us a lot of mixed signals right now once again this would be the region that I am talking about for support to come into play thank you very much for watching um, I wanted to mention one thing I have a number of people that often ask me my opinion on Bitcoin um, and if I will ever chart the Bitcoin market I, I might chart the Bitcoin market one day uh, and provide some analysis on it I am NOT an investor in Bitcoin um, just from a high-level overview I do think that Bitcoin is in some ways a superior form of currency than fiat US dollars uh, simply for the fact that it is not controlled by a private central bank such as the Federal Reserve that said I do not invest in Bitcoin myself because there is something about it that I fundamentally distrust and that is the purely um, technological makeup of that market so I do stick with gold and silver because I like the fact that they are tangible and that I can hold them and that no matter what happens with a server or anything else that metal is here to stay um, if you are a Bitcoin investor though I think you've done extremely well and you should congratulate yourself and by all means if you can make a profit in any market I say go for it on that note the premium research that I do provide comes out every week covering physical gold physical silver the GDX and individual miners as long as the markets remain in the general trajectory that we are seeing right now I think there is an excellent opportunity here for precious metals investors with a sufficient time frame if you have a unique situation that you would like to discuss with someone who does not sell the metals or any of these equities I would be happy to sit down and discuss that with you you can book an individual consultation on my website thank you very much I will see you this time next week.